is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Poco F5 5G and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution x -Rom. and I have been daily driving it for a long time now and I have to say my experience has been good but recently I have been facing a little bit of issues which I'll talk about but this is the December 13, 2023 build and if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your Poco F5 you can find the flashing guide from the description. Talking about the Android version section it has the Evolution X logo still and we have the Android version of course as Android 14 and we have the Evolution X version showing as 8.1 the code name is Yema and this is for Marvel or the Poco F5's code name and here the security patch that you are getting is latest of December 5th 2023 so that's just awesome. The stock kernel that you are getting here is the 5.10 silver core kernel and the build maintainer is of course Joe and the build date here is again 13 December 2023. Here is the gesture settings right here we have the quick tap actions but I have actually tried it it's not working I think as you can see I'm back tapping over here it's not doing anything so the quick tap is actually not working for some reason so that's how it is i'll just disable it for the time being we have the quick loop in camera as well you can use it if you want let me go back we have the navigation mode and you can change the pill length and radius from here you can enable the navigation hint and the edge long swipe actions you can actually change and we have the back gesture height back gesture animation and the haptic then the ime button space we have the swipe to invoke assistant as well that is also working perfectly fine we have the left edge right edge customizations as well let's test the long swipe action and here if i just do this as you can see the torch has turned on and right now as you can see it is working we also have the two and three button navigations right here then we have the one-handed mode which is working then we have the lift to check phone i'll test that and i'll just enable this show ambient option and we have the press and hold power button action you can change it to digital assistant if you want double tap option is also there then we have the swipe to screenshot that is working we have the share edit delete the google lens and even the capture mode feature appears then we have the normal quick touch option with the power button you can use it and we have the playback control and the prevent ringing and in case you look at the change log there is a huge list of changes right here you can read it out if you want but I'll show you some of the changes. Of course, the stock launcher has changed back to the pixel launcher. And here you will not get the double tap to sleep anywhere in the whole screen. But overall, the stability right now is much, much better. Let me actually show you in the wallpapers and styles earlier. If you go here and in the mode wallpapers, it used to like not load these kind of wallpapers. But right now, all the wallpapers are loading perfectly fine. As you can see, the minerals options and stuff. But as you can see, they are actually working fine. And even the come alive section, I have downloaded these wallpapers. And the living universe wallpapers you can also use. And of course, there are the AI wallpapers. You can also choose from right here, whichever AI wallpaper that you want to use. So yeah, these are actually working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it right now. I'll show you this wallpapers and styles section later on a little bit. But here, let me actually go into the home screen settings. These are the customizations that you get for the pixel launcher. And in here, we have the search and disabling options and stuff. Search preference, you can actually set from right here. And we have the other options like the add app icons to the home screen and stuff like that. The recent panel looks like this. We have the screenshot, the select option. And if you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps from here in the recents. And I have also added the widgets. The battery widget is actually working perfectly fine. As you can see, no problems whatsoever. And here we have the like clock widget and stuff. Everything is working. And the animations of these like widgets are like very, very smooth experience. It's giving, I have to say, it's much more smoother than even the previous Evolution X launcher. And just opening and closing apps, it's a much better experience in my opinion. Once you open a particular app, the animations of them are just really, really cool. And it's a very smooth experience. In the stock launcher to the left of the home screen, of course, we are getting the Google's Discover page. Now, one more thing you can say has been removed is the app lock because with this stock launcher, there is no app lock settings. But even if you go in the settings panel and then go into the security and in the more settings here, you will not find any kind of app lock yet. So app lock is not there anymore. So maybe in the future updates, it will be added. And I'm not showing you all the toggles that I have added, but yeah, these are the toggles. You can just take a glimpse what toggles that I have added. This is how the quick setting panel looks like. The brightness slider is on the bottom because I have customized it that way. And also we do have the advanced reboot and stuff. So you can directly reboot to the recovery from right here. Now let's talk about the issue that I have been facing. Well, it's regarding Bluetooth. I have actually seen once I connect to a Bluetooth headset, it's a really like weird experience. So as you can see right now, it's force closing. I think it's because of the Bluetooth kind of thing. So that's how it is. As you can see right now, the Bluetooth is not turning off. I'm trying to turn it off. It's not doing anything. If I try to go into the settings, okay, right now it's turned off. I just re enable that. And if I go into the settings and sound settings, it cannot go into the sound settings. This is the problem I was talking about. As you can see right now, even the settings is not responding. 
So this is the issue with Bluetooth that I have been talking about. Well, this is a really big issue for me because I use Bluetooth device all the time. So hopefully it will be fixed in the future updates. But for Evolution X, I think this is like one of the like most weird experience that I have been getting because these kind of bugs simply doesn't appear in this ROM. With the newer kind of patch and stuff, I think this will be fixed in the future updates. But as of right now, yes, this particular bug is there. So do be concerned about that. Just connect it to Bluetooth device. And if I just place a call, as you can see again, the Bluetooth device is not appearing in the call dialer. It only has the speaker option right here. Later I found out that if you disable the spatial audio on both phone speaker and wired headphones, it will be working fine. I mean, the Bluetooth becomes a lot more stable if you just disable the spatial audio in your sound settings. But in case you are wondering about the 5G speeds, yes, 5G and stuff, everything is working fine. No need to worry about it. Talking about the stock camera, you are still getting the Leica camera version 5 and with this everything is working perfectly fine like the 4K 60fps videos and stuff you can switch to it and we have the documents mode, we have enhanced mode and the pro mode videos you can shoot then even the portrait mode pictures and stuff even with the front camera as you can see it's working perfectly fine no problems with it I will show you some samples on the screen but yeah overall the camera experience over here is amazing no issues that I have faced with the Leica camera version 5 the DRM info over here shows as L1 but sometimes it shows this device integrity not working and the strong integrity not actually working but yeah I have tried banking apps they are working fine and in terms of Google Photos it does have the unlimited photos and videos backup with the Google Photos so that's a really nice feature to have. In the battery settings this is how it looks like we have the battery level right here and we have the battery usage status performance mode you can actually go into it and just turn it on then we have the thermal profiles as well so per app you can set thermal profiles like I did with this Android benchmark and stuff and you have these many options or the profiles you can set. We have the charging control as well but if you enable that your fast charging will be a lot more slower so do not enable that I guess if you want fast charging and here this is the notification this is how the notification actually comes this is like a iOS kind of style you can say and here we have the battery charge warning the sleep mode the battery optimization per app you can do and we have the battery health right here my battery health shows as 87 percent and the battery temperature shows as 31 degrees because it's cold right here and we have the charging cycles as 233 cycles for my device and there is the battery diagnostics this is a pixel kind of feature the battery life that i have been getting with aku battery app i have been getting nine hours and 26 minutes of screen on time so that's a really good amount of screen on time i would say yes these are all estimated numbers but still in my opinion nine plus hours of screen on time is awesome and the screen off you can see that's the standby time 49 hours so about you can say two days worth of usage totally and the combined use shows as 16 hours so if you use the device straight up all the time it will give you about 16 hours of screen on time but it definitely gives you a full day of usage with a full charge no issues and in the health section for my device in this echo battery app the health actually shows as 90 percent and again fast charging over here is working perfectly fine no problem so far with it let's go into the sound settings this is how it looks like media call ring etc volume controls and we have the do not disturb the phone ringtone status and the spatial audio and stuff is there and we have the now playing right here then we also have this media option and we have the vibration and haptics right here you can customize and if you enable this touch feedback you will get a haptic feedback all over the UI so that's really good we have the brightness rider haptic the quick setting tile haptic and the volume haptic as well then the ringtone vibration pattern changing option default alarm sound and stuff and this clear calling option is still there but if you enable it and just go back it will just disable itself that's how it is but our volume control is there and we have the dial pad tone screen locking charging sound etc and the clear speaker option is there and again i have already showed you the dolby atmos yes it is there you can use it if you want but it might be buggy here and there but in the volume panel let me actually show you the sound output device switching option doesn't appear for some reason as you can see if you just expand it it will show you this pop-up of the full volume panel customization right now it's playing and as you can see you can switch the output device from this option this one works with the quick setting panel and even on the lock screen as you can see I can do that from the lock screen too. Now let me show you the wallpaper sense styles and these are the options for that and we have the lock screen customization. The home screen customization is present right here. I have already showed you can change the accent colors from here as well as you can see and we also have the themed icons the app grid is there up to 5 by 5 and inside lock screen customization you are getting this new clock of Android 14 you can say yes these options are still there the older kind of clocks looks a little bit weird with this wallpaper but yeah as you can see right now it is working perfectly fine with this clock i'll show you in the lock screen also you can have the shortcuts customization then the other notification kind of customization and in the display settings this is how it looks like we have the brightness level and the adaptive brightness or auto brightness and we have the extra time feature then we have the lock screen settings right here 
we also have the lift to check phone and stuff i'll show you these if they are working we have this dynamic clock size i guess and we have the screen timeout there is also the screen attention if you want to use that in the dark theme we also have the black kind of themes and stuff let me go back we have the display size and text options these are the options for that and we also have the dpi customization the night light customize the intensity and we have the color calibration red green or blue you can change and we have the colors the normal colors you can change to boosted saturated eruptive and the blurs and stuff then the smart pixels minimum and maximum refresh rate is back you can actually change that for some reason the maximum refresh rate changed to 60 hertz i don't know why we have the smooth display as well you can enable it from right here we have the low power refresh rate then the double tap to wake prevent accidental wake up wake up on plug and the pocket detection as well per app refresh rate you can actually change from right here 120 hertz or 60 hertz you can do that with the lift to check phone even if i have this show ambient option selected right now if i just show you that and here if i try to wake the device the pickup gesture is working but it's leading to the lock screen not in the always on display or the ambient display so i'll just disable this one now let's just enable the always on display normally the clock animation just notice how beautiful it looks so this animation of android 14 definitely looks super awesome in my opinion with this particular clock i just love it so this i would say one of the most amazing and newest feature of this rom and it looks beautiful and even you can use other clocks if you want to by the way again talking about the fingerprint scanner speed it's just working perfectly fast and it's a very smooth experience with the fingerprint scanner no problems whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner and in the security settings there is the quick unlock and stuff and all other features that you are noticing just completed the setup of the face unlock and here if i click done and in the face unlock settings we have this always require confirmation and the skip lock screen option there is no swipe up to unlock i guess let me check if it works so i'll just double tap to wake okay so right now it's not unlocking so if i just swipe up okay still it's not unlocking with the face unlock so this is what i have faced over here if i just set up the face unlock it's like doesn't work so i don't know what's the point of the face unlock so i'll just delete the face data for the time being again there is no app lock over here do not expect any app lock as of right now maybe they will be added in the future updates but there are some cool features of this rom let me actually show you i have just enabled the developer option which you can see in the system settings it's turned on and if i just go back and if i just try to open some apps like geopause light this one is actually showing to turn off developer option but what i can do is i can go into the settings and then security and in the more settings and in here there is a feature called hide developer status and i'll just search this geopause slide app and i'll just select that and i'll close it up and go back and right now if i open it so as you can see it has logged me in into this app so this is really good that the like, developer option you can actually hide from particular apps if you need to. And by the way, I still have the developer option turned on and there is the Geopause light app still working. So let's do a quick reboot test on the Poco F5. Took about 40 seconds. Now let's talk performance well in terms of overall performance i haven't faced any kind of issues over here except for that bluetooth kind of bug which i just showed you otherwise opening and closing apps it's not a problem at all even in twitter or x you can say if i just scroll as you can see it's a very smooth experience in twitter no problems whatsoever and if i open youtube and the other apps let me actually quickly show you the split screen feature that too is actually working perfectly fine no problems with it as you can see and you can scale the apps just like this and switching between apps if i just do that as you can see it's a very smooth experience even if i open play store and try to switch between apps it's not a problem at all so ram management is working perfectly fine this is a 8 gb ram unit that i have over here but even with that i would say the overall experience it's just very smooth yes of course the gaming performance will be really good too no need to worry about it and here are the android and geek build score with a cpu stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall ui performance now talking about customizations of course you are getting the customizations inside the evolver and it's doing these weird things because it's just connecting to the bluetooth for some reason because i just disabled and re-enabled it a couple of time and right now it is connected as you can see in the theme settings we have the we have this theme style like the expressive spirits and the rainbow fruit salad muted and the content kind of options then we have the color source you can change those and we have the luminance and chroma factor changing option even the tint background option is there we have the dark theme right here and we have the headline and body fonts again plethora of options are here we have the icon packs as well and we also have the wi-fi icon styles then we have the icon shapes and we have the brightness slider style and the navigation bar style then we have the signal icon styles as well 
then the data icon kind of styles you can change then we have the status bar options and you can customize the battery style and stuff like that a lot of options are here we have the battery percentage the battery bar you can actually enable and in here we have the thickness customization and if you just increase the thickness there is the battery bar i have a tempered glass applied that's why it's not appearing perfectly but yeah if you don't have a tempered glass with black borders it will appear perfectly fine we have the colored icons notification icons bluetooth battery stats and the mic camera privacy icon then the media projection privacy and the other options let me go back in the notifications we have the show clipboard overlay and the island notification this is a new notification that i have been talking about it's working great we have the heads up and you can disable and enable it we have the less boring heads up as well notification sound if active and the normal notification light you can actually change the quick settings we have the level text size and the vertical layout and stuff you can enable and with that this is how the quick setting panel actually looks like and we have the battery style and stuff for the quick setting panel we have the secure quick setting tiles require unlocking and the quick pull down and stuff then the brightness slider you can actually change just for the quick settings and we have the brightness slider position you can have it on show always and to the bottom we have the auto brightness and the animation styles you can actually change then we have the show data usage in the quick setting panel and this is the animation of the like tiles so i think okay so this is the style of the toggling on or off just notice how cool it looks so yeah this is really cool that you can use these kind of animations if you want to in the power menu we have the system settings then the power menu access on lock screen and we have the advanced reboot options and the other options you can notice from here then we also have the gestures and the system settings and the click to partial screenshot and a double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen both are working fine then we have the buttons you can change it to navigation mode the edge long swipe action and stuff system settings are there this is for the like power menu and stuff and the volume panel on the left side volume panel timeout you can customize part of volume control is there we have the volume steps right here and these are the options for that and we have the swap capacity buttons now into the lock screen we have the ambient music ticker the edge lighting the lock screen clock font these are the android 13 kind of clock fonts you can use it but you have to use the default clock style of the android 14 clocks before so that you can use these particular clocks let me go back we have the weather condition then the lock screen charging info always on display scheduling option hide status bar and the ripple effect also we have the fingerprint authentication and error vibration this is how good the ripple effect actually looks like right now the ripple effect is actually working i would say so you don't need to worry about the black wallpapers i guess earlier there was the black wallpaper issue with the ripple effect but right now with the pixel launcher it has been fixed so this is great in the animations we have the charging animation that the screen of animation is there as well then we have the miscellaneous settings we have the play integrity fix and you can see like how the device is mocking the play integrity and we have the unlimited google photo storage feature unlock higher fps in games and then fix poof the jitter and the ignore window secure flags allow application downgrade then the show cpu info and we have the sensor block part package and the usb configuration you can set it to file transfer if you want to so these are all the customizations which are present in this rom so let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think about the latest build of the evolution x rom i just hope that this bluetooth bug gets fixed this bluetooth issue has been really annoying me it's just like i have to force reboot the device just to connect to a bluetooth device and even after that after reboot it's not guaranteed that it will work perfectly fine i still may face the issue that i have actually faced otherwise this rom you guys know has been really one of my favorite roms out there and hopefully the problems will be fixed in the future let me know in the comments what you guys think about it and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet share this video with your friends if you want them to know how the evolution x rom with the android 14 actually holding up for this particular device and i just love the lock screen clock over here just notice how beautiful it looks just like a pixel so this actually looks really really beautiful in my opinion thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is t2 from kdn tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now